Hello and welcome back and today I want to do a hardware review of the brand new D400S expansion from QNAP. Now straight away you may notice that I'm up here. I want the whole video to be about this device. So as little as me as possible. If you do want to know I'm here, I am still very much here. What I want to talk about today is ultimately is this device worth your data? Because there's a lot of expansions currently available in the market right now. And this is probably one of the middle ground ones for you guys out there that are looking for a little bit of expandability, but are not looking to break the bank. It arrives at about 320, 330 quid, including the VAT, but that of course does not include hard drive media or SSD media inside. We've already unboxed this video for a, um, uh, we've already unboxed this device for a video on Span TV, but today I want to focus a lot more on this hardware. But for those that want to know about what you get inside, there's the retail box. Inside, you get your power cable. You've got warranty information. You've got two years of warranty. You've got your quick start installation guide. You have got screws there, which I'll show you again in a sec. You've got back planes. You've got screws there for two and a half inch and three and a half inch media, as well as um, keys for those lockable bays. Put that there. You have got an external power brick and a PCIe card that we're going to talk about, along with an SFF cable as well. So quite a lot of accessories here for about 300 quid and a few that we don't really see in the majority of NAS devices or even DAS devices on this channel. So let's get rid of the ones that aren't important right now and just stick to the ones that are. So first and foremost, let's talk about that PSU. Now this device here is a four bay, but it is quite a low end PSU. This isn't a NAS device. It doesn't have a hardware RAID built in. This is quite a rudimentary device supporting JBOD, just a bunch of drives. And it is an expansion system where if you do want a RAID configuration, RAID 0, RAID 1, RAID 5, or even RAID 6 and 10, you're going to need to handle this on your connected host system. That is a NAS, a PC, or to a lesser degree, a Mac. There are drivers there are slightly au fait at the moment. So, the external PSU, I know a number of you aren't a huge fan of an external power brick, but me personally, I quite like external power bricks. They're easy to replace. They're not finickety, and I would rather be able to swap one of these out really easily than have to unscrew this and try and get to it. Now, the thing that's interesting about the D400S, as well as all of the new expansions from QNAP, is the fact that they arrive with, the S series at least, a QNAP PCIe card. This card goes inside either a QNAP NAS with a PCIe slot, or a PC or Mac system that is compatible. Once you install it inside, you can connect this card in the host system, utilizing this cable, to the device. Now, this doesn't use USB as an expansion port like the older generation, the UX series. It utilizes this connection here, utilizing this SAS cable. Now, I say SAS, remember this is a SATA expansion. It utilizes SATA hard drives inside. But with the right RAID configuration handled by your host system, eking the right performance out of those hard drives, and the utilization of this kind of connection that removes a lot of the bottleneck from the likes of USB and eSATA, which is largely the utilization of expansions today, desktop users can now get some serious performance from an expansion device. Now, whereas USB 3 alternative 4 base, like the TR004, were giving you between 3 and 500 megabytes maximum, this device can go a great deal higher. It can get closer to 12 or even 1500 megabytes per second with the right media inside. QNAP themselves do present a bunch of speeds that I'm sure are on screen somewhere at some point in this video. But what I will say is the speeds that they promise are utilizing SSDs. And the majority of you will not be utilizing this with SSDs. So do bear that in mind. Also bear in mind that utilizing a RAID 0 on this, whether you're using a PC, um, Windows, uh, sorry, a PC, Mac, or NAS system, RAID 0 is going to give you great performance, but almost no redundancy in any meaningful way, unless you're going to use like one of those spanning RAIDs, which is still not greatly reliable. Now, although the device um, utilizes that proprietary connection, everything else about it is incredibly familiar. So if we remove that over there and remove the back plane, we can take a good look at this device. And again, arriving at about 
320, 230 quid. This is a four bay device. It utilizes the familiar plastic chassis that we've seen in the 31P series and along with the other expansion devices too. There's LEDs up here to give us real time information about the drives being accessed as well as the system and the status and of course the power. There's no additional USB ports here. This is just to be connected by that connection we've looked at, looked at the rear. Now, the device does not need to be fully populated on day one. It will affect how the RAID configuration you choose adapts, and if you don't use a scalable RAID, then you might lock yourself out of adding more drives later on, so do bear that in mind. But each of those trays can be locked. Now, that's important on an expansion device. I've already pre-installed a hard drive here because we will be doing speed testing. But with an expansion device, Having lockable trays or a lockable cable or effectively any means to stop this device falling off the connection is very, very important. Expansion devices will often be used in unison with existing RAID arrays, not in a spread way, but in a kind of parallel way. And that can often mean that if this device falls off the connected storage system for even a second, it can often be mission critical failure. What that means is lockable trays, um, lockable cables are incredibly important and I'm glad to see they have included those lockable trays. It's not a big detail and chances are they were on the trays already but it is a lovely little feature on an expansion that I've all too often not seen for no reason. It's silly not to have lockable trays on an expansion. Now you can see here with this tray that I've got a drive inside. So if we go for one of the other trays that doesn't have a drive inside it does arrive with plastic trays. The majority of the chassis is plastic or with metal on the inside with SATA connections there at the rear inside. The drive trays are really easy to install the drive. You can remove those side clips, you slot in a drive and you reinstall those clips either side of the drive. It's that straightforward, no screwdriver required. Although if you are going to utilize SSD media, you will need to take advantage of those screw holes for those SSDs, so there are screws included. And again, you can operate this device with just a single hard drive if you so choose. Put that in there. Now, it does support the very latest hard drives, and again, Seagate Iron Wolf NAS series of drives currently in 16 terabytes of size are possible to uh, install inside this device, giving you up to a raw 64 terabytes of storage in a RAID 0. Of course, you won't use a RAID 0 unless you're a lunatic, but it's nice to know that these days a four bay like this can give you such a huge amount of raw storage straight off the bat. Um, and again, they are SATA drives, so you are gonna have to, even in a RAID 0 array of hard drives, I do think you're gonna struggle to get more than about four to 500 megabytes of four traditional hard drives inside this device, even enterprise led ones at 7200 RPM and 256 megabytes cache at least, I do think you're gonna to struggle to get more than 500 meg, give or take, out of this device with hard drives. So do bear that in mind. If you want more than that, you wanna start looking at the eight bay or even the 16 bay. Now again, looking at the rear of this device, we'll move that drive over. We can see that large rear fan there to keep things lovely and cool there when the device is in operation. And that fan can be controlled by that switcher at the bottom where you can lower or heighten the RPM as needed. And by needed, I mean if it's getting too hot or if it's making too much noise. That fan won't actually make that much noise, but enterprise level hard drive media might well make more noise. Talking of noise, there is a switch to disable any buzzers. And again, expansion devices will generally beep and irk and largely any operation it won't you know if it's being accessed it won't beep but if you want to make sure that any temperature sensors or any of the alerts are getting annoying you can always deactivate them and finally you've got that cable connection there and bear in mind just because you've got the open bandwidth of this card and cable connected here it is still always going to be about hard drive media you pre-install now we will be doing more speed tests on this chassis and again i quite like the cooling on it i quite like the fact we've got that big old fan there on the rear and although there's no lcd panel or any of the kind of bells and whistles that we're used to it is an affordable alternative to the tr um, for a 004 hardware RAID expansion. In fact, the two are quite similarly priced, with this device favouring, instead of that hard drive, um, the hardware RAID, the inclusion of that card and the speed that is significantly better than the USB 3 on that expansion. So do bear that in mind. There is a USB Type-C version of this JBOD, but of course that does not arrive with the card and it will rely on you utilising a USB 3 port on your host NAS or PC system. 
it is very hard to review an item like this on in on its own i will say it's got a rugged design and i will say that if you are looking for a jbot affordable expansion you're going to be hard pushed to find a better one than this tune out nas or not but this has been the D400S. I look forward to showing you a speed test on this video on this device very, very soon. So do check that out. Do click like if you've enjoyed this video. Click subscribe to learn more and visit the links in the description for more information about this device as we update it more and more during our review. Otherwise, thank you so much for watching and I'll see you next time.